Welcome back to another Jazz Club World video, and happy Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania release day. Hope everyone enjoys the film whenever you go see it. I hope to go see it either tonight or sometime tomorrow. I'll be seeing it Sunday for sure, but I want to go sometime today or tomorrow. I have work, so that's why I'm having a bit of trouble going. But anyway, I'm going to be reviewing Released and Ghost from Ant-Man and Wasp 2-Pack. This came out back in 2019, I believe, during when all the 80th anniversary figures came out for Marvel. And there's like four different MCU 2-Packs. We had an Iron Man Spider-Man 2-Pack, a Scourge and Hela 2-Pack from Thor Ragnarok, and then the Iron Man Spider-Man was from Infinity War. And then we had the Korg and Grandmaster 2-Pack, and we had the Release and Ghost 2-Pack from Ant-Man and the Wasp. So, a lot of pretty cool 2-packs came with some really neat figures. Um, but I just thought I'd review Ant-Man, um, not Ant-Man, but Elise and Ghost, since it is part of the Ant-Man trilogy, and Ant-Man the Lost came out. And since the Marvel Legends, um, Ant-Man figures hasn't been released yet. It'll be coming out in August, so. With that, let's now take a look at the package. Taking a look at the packaging, we get a Marvel Legends logo up here, and this is actually, I think, my second 2-pack I've reviewed. Um, we have Luis right here, and we have the pin tech, I think it's like a suitcase sort of deal. And we have Ghost, of course, right here. We also have the Ant-Man and the Wasp logo. Pretty cool. It's in this nice kind of black packaging two-pack. It's not like the curved sort of edges sort. It's like the just full-on straight box packaging. We got Luis right here on the side. And then, of course, we have Ghost over here on this side. And we take a look at the back here. I've always loved it when they do the posters for the movie on the back of the packaging. So we got the Ant-Man the Wasp poster. Like I said in my overview of all the figures, you only see this really when it's an anniversary. So like the first 10 years, or the 80th anniversary, or the Infinity Saga. Pretty cool little poster. And then, of course, we have a look at the two characters up here. I think that's Ghost. And then over here, we have Elise. So we have two bios to look at. So let's take a look real quick. So this is, we have Elise right here. And it's actually a bit longer passage than normal. We have this right here. So hopefully it's not too blurry. It's a lot of more, I think, text than normal. So there's Elise's bio. And then over here, we have Ghost. So we got Ghost up there. And we have her bio right there. So again, a pretty long passage than normal. It's a bit more difficult to get in shot and to have it fully um, able to read. But there's Ghost. And that's a look at the packaging. We already took a look at the side right here. And we're now back to the front with Luis and Ghost. So let's get them out of the package and take a look how they're packaged in that plastic tray. And I'll take a look at the accessories and figure. So inside the package here, I actually missed it. There's a giant ant right here, which is kind of cool. <laughs> I think this may be the one they were using at the end. Or the one that was supposed to be in the house or the apartment. We got a look at Luis right here, and let me just take this out because it's gonna fall out as soon as I turn it. We have a look at Luis right here in his ex-con suit. We get the Pemtech um, suitcase story deal right here, and we get Ghost with her little hood right here, and also a extra head. And I believe that's all she comes with. I don't think she comes with any extra hands that I feel. So yeah, so a lot of things. Well, not actually not too many things, but a couple of things to go through whenever we take a look. So let's do that right now. So we have four accessories here. We have. The Pym uh, lab, I believe. I think that's what the suitcase is supposed to be. We have the giant ant. We have Ghost's head. And we have, I think, a hood. Like, it's supposed to be her hood basically just pulled back. So let's take a look at the hood real quick. So bringing the hood up, it has this, like, ring piece, which I think... Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive this is a hood. Um, it's kind of, like, pushed back right here. It may be able to go around her neck and everything. Um, which we can try when we take the head off, see if it works like that. Although, now that I think about it, it probably can't be the hood. Because if we take a look, her hair, well, hmm. Maybe, maybe it would work. We'll have to take a look whenever the, we take a look at the um, head on the body. But it just, it's just kind of like a whitish, maybe bluish gray. <laughs> uh, my vision is a bit hard to tell on these lighter colors sometimes. But um, you can kind of see some just a smidge of line detailing. So that's our little hood we have right there. We'll set it aside. Next up, we have little, um, the head accessory for our ghost. Let's see. Right there, I think it turned out all right. She has this long hair in the front. So, um, yeah. You see, now, I think this probably, I think it could work like that. Again, we'll take a look in a second. She's pretty, pretty long hair, got some nice line sculpting on the hair. It's kind of a rubber, you can move it. It's a bit stiff, but you just want to be a bit careful so those don't tear her off or break off. And that's her head accessory. Next up, we have the, the little ant right here. His arms and everything are 
bit bent from being in that packaging, the way I guess I positioned it. Uh, we have the head right here. Of course, there's antlers on top. And so, it's kind of nice we got one. I honestly forgot this came with them. I'm almost sure it's maybe, it's not as big as it's supposed to be, but it's supposed to be the one with the, from probably the apartment that was playing the drums. Um, why else would this come with the least I would assume? But, um, it has like six legs um, on it. Of course, the ant body. So, I think it's a pretty good representation of the ant. Of course, it's not too hard to make, I bet, but still. They are very, um, the legs are a bit thin. They can move a smidge. They won't stay into place. But you just want to make sure you don't tear those off. And everything. If you hear noise in the ground, it's my cats back there. But, um, yeah, let's look at the ant. And I'll take a look at the Pintech. Finally, we have the Pimtech lab. So we saw this in Ant-Man and the Wasp, of course, and Avengers Endgame. This is what Scott was pulling when he was walking around looking at the, the um, how the world became after Thanos. I think there's represented some wheels on the bottom, but it's just a square box and has some kind of like line detailing on the side, I believe. Yeah, right there. Maybe it's supposed to be a building. I can't remember if it's supposed to be a suitcase or if it's supposed to be a building. It looks like a suitcase, so I assume that, oh, well, I forgot I can do that. Okay, so you can pull out the little handlebar. I totally forgot that I can do that. That's so cool. So, yeah, it's just basically a suitcase, I believe. You have all those little line detailings. And, yeah, it's basically, I think, mirrored all the way around. Top of it, so... Yeah, that's a look at the PIM lab. I'm pretty sure it's the lab. But now we move on to our, the figures. We're going to take a look at Ghost first. So first up, we have a Ghost here. We can take a look at her head sculpt. She, of course, she has the head up now. You can kind of see her eyes, I believe. Of course, she's supposed to help her, um, like, be able to control her phasing um, feature. And so, yeah. It's a pretty cool figure. I'm happy we got this because we didn't get the villain. Um, for that movie when the wave came out originally. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Take a look at some of the detailings. Not too much detailing on her. Just basically one color, one suit. Have some line detailings on it. And, yeah, it's pretty much it about her costume and everything. Um, I will say, because of the way the figure was just built, you do have this, like, um... I don't know what to call it, maybe like an increase right there, a crease in the body, like where the mold would connect. Of course, you need that ab crunch, like so. But um, still, it kind of just makes it, you see that line and everything right there. And just, I don't know, it's something I noticed when I'm holding it and opening it up. But yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so taking a look at articulation. You can move her head really any position, any way around. Go up the side, side, smidge, and like that. But that's it. Uh, you can't really twist it or it'll pop off. Move her arm around 360 degrees. Same with this arm. She can move her arm out that far. She can bend the elbow. Twist at the elbow and twist at the hand joint. I kind of like to think her hand is like when she was reaching the sky. I think it was um, Hank's body when she was phasing. Just position that back like so. Move this arm out like so. Bend it that far. Twist and twist to the hand. You can then move it back into right there. She can move her leg up that far. Move it back that far. And then she can do the same with this leg. Move it up that far. Move it back. And she can bend at the legs. So she can go that far down. Same with this leg. Like so. So pretty good range of motion there. She can do splits. And she can't really move at the feet, I don't think. I mean, she kind of can, but then it's going to uh, mess up her stance and whatnot. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the articulation I can find on her body. Does she move? Oh, yeah, she can go... 360 degrees on the body, like so. So yeah, pretty cool range of motion there. Let's now take our head off. So I'm just gonna pop it up like so. Maybe, maybe if I twist it will pop off for me. <laughs> uh -huh, there we go, so yeah. Like, see if you saw there, her head doesn't really pop off. I mean, it doesn't really turn, it would just pop off. Okay, so taking these accessories, I'm almost positive. Actually, I'm not quite positive. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to go. I wanna think it's like, it's supposed to be like this. Like, it's supposed to be her hood. Let's see, can I get her head to pop on? It's a question. Just gonna push it in, I guess. No? Hmm. Let's see. So her, her thing's right there. And her head, 
the hole in the head goes back that far. So can this go on? I don't want to break the head or the joints, so I don't know what this is supposed to be. I'm trying to get it to go in. Huh, it's so weird. Okay, well, we'll take it off for now. But her head can go in like so. So we just, oh, there we go. If I just put it in, should just pop into place. So after a lot of effort there, I don't know why I have so much trouble putting the head's on. Her head's finally on, and it also kind of does not move. You can't really twist it with the hair, and it's kind of stuck on there. You can't even bend it. I guess you can. But I'm still so confused on what this is supposed to be that I almost think... Uh, so let me know in the comments. Oh, there we go. Let me know in the comments below. Is this supposed to be a hood piece or, um, I don't know what this is. Again, this is really just my thoughts, um, just on these figures I have in my collection. I just don't know what this is. I, I think it's a hood, but if so, it was impossible to get that on, and it's hard to get the head on anyway, so just can't imagine trying to get this on with the head on. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments below, but with that, let's take a look at Luis. One more thing, I will say pushing her head on uh, did make her feet move now. So you can move them like so. Um, same with this one. You can move it up like that and down that far. So not sure we're supposed to do that that far down. But uh, in pretty, trying to put the head on, it was able to make her feet um, do the range of motions they were supposed to. But now we, sh we will take a look at Luis. Okay, one last thing. I did it. I think, let me know. I think that's how it's supposed to go on. And it does look like a hood. So you were able to get the hood on with... Um, the head it just took me one try so i'm happy that went along but i didn't really talk about her standing abilities and we will move on to at least one second but um she is able to stand i messed up her probably pose now by moving her trying to get her um head to go on but she was able to stand Let's see if i can get it to fix up a bit i was able to get her stand right here you can kind of see she's standing and I will say this, with Ghost, I'm happy she's able to stand. Kind of foreshadowing Belle Louise. Um, but still, um, she's in standing standing position. And we'll take a look at a different, like an action pose at the end when we're taking a look at my final thoughts. But now, we will move on to Louise. Okay, so here we have Louise. And it's just kind of a... I mean, for some people, it's going to be a boring figure. It's just this guy in a suit. But I love the character of Louise. I think he's pretty funny. I like the way he talks and how he tells the story super quickly. Um... And yeah, I just have one little problem with it, and um, it's kind of like a Baron Zemo um, situation. And I'm saying I like people know what I'm talking about, but no one does because I am reviewed him really on my channel. I just took a look, I took a look at him on my own, but he does not stand, unfortunately. Um, I've tried a lot, and maybe <laughs> I should try to take his head off and push it in, and maybe I can get him to stand. Oh wait, hold on. He's standing, yay! <laughs> All right, well, he's in a weird pose. He's like kind of like leaning. Um, I don't really like that, but still, we'll we'll test that a little bit more later. But you can maybe get him to stand? Question mark. Um, anyway, so take a look at the head scope. Um, he has this like it looks I don't know it looks kind of creepy the head on. Um, but I, I think it kind of gets his character across. Um. So yeah, he's basically just wearing a black jacket suit and you can probably take it off. I'm sure you can unbutton it. I'm not going to try to, but it is like movable. So like if I put my finger right here, you can kind of see the hole where his sleeve is. And if you take it off, his hand, his arms will be black because that's his um, jacket. Um, but yeah, you have a tie under there. And you have, I think, the XCOM logo on here somewhere. Where is it? There we go. I think that's like a little, oh, it's kind of blurry. Come on, focus. Eh, it doesn't want to focus. And anyway, this is where his little badge would be. Right there. Does not want to focus. Right, moving down to his khakis right here. He has some khaki pants on. Just some sculpting in there. And we have his shoes. Um, Again, it was a bit hard to get him to stand, but he's now standing. They're more like, they feel like more like boots. They look like boots. No, they look like shoes. So, that's Luis. He has an open hand and another open hand right here for him to hold the, the lab. And yeah, let's take a look at articulation. So with articulation, he can move his head down that far, still pretty far down. He can move it up that far up. Twist it side to side. Go 360 degrees. 
and then you can also, yeah, that's it for head. With this arm, you can go 360 degrees like so, 360 degrees. You can move his arm out that far. Same with this arm, so, mm, well, there we go, okay. <laughs> that far, and then you can bend his arm in like so. There you go. You can twist, his at, twist it at the arm like, like that. You can move his hand around, and he does have a joint at the hand, so you can move it out like that, and move it down like that. That's pretty cool. Same with this arm, you can bend it in like so. You can move it, just hand around. Same with his arm. And you can move his hand at the joint like so. And for his ab crunch, I don't think he'll have one. He may have one. No, it's kind of hard with the suit on and the jacket. You can twist his body around 360 degrees. He can do the splits with his legs. You can bend the leg that far down. You can kick it up that far. Can kick it back that far so just a pretty good range of motion there same with this leg go that far up and go that far back now for his feet um they kind of bent upwards like that in a way it was a bit hard to get him to stand that's what i just pushed down on his legs but still they can't really twist oh yes they, they can twist and then this one i guess guess i guess can also twist um so yeah um, that's all his articulation I can find on his body, and let's see, can I get him to stand again? So he's kind of looking down, it's really my camera's position, it's kind of high up in the figures, but still, he's able to stand, and I was able to get him to stand by holding the quantum tunnel, or the quantum suitcase building, the PIM lab base, basically. We can just get him to hold it in his hand, it's kind of a little uh, open grip, so you just kind of have a setting in his hand like that. And with the the PIM lab, he actually stands quite well, which is kind of shocking. Kind of see right there. And I'm sure we can, like, if we move him back here, we can probably get him to the lab to go to the ground. We'll lay him down. Pull it up like so. So there you go. You can use that kind of like as a base for him to stand. And yeah, outstanding. And so that's my review of Luis. Um, Pretty cool figure. We'll take a look at my final thoughts right now. Let me get them in a pretty cool pose, and yeah. All right, so there you go. That's my review of Elise and Ghost from the two-pack and Amanda Wasp from the 80th anniversary line for Marvel Legends. A pretty cool two-pack. I was able to get Elise stand, so kind of, but that definitely brought him up a bit from where I was kind of like not a big fan of it. But for a guy who's just in a suit, and it just could be because I like the character, I think it's a pretty cool figure. And Ghost. It's a pretty cool figure. Got a good range of motion for what she can do. She got her, you got her hood, which was a bit hard to put on the head and the hood at the same time, but I was able to do that. I took it off for, and put her mask back on. But I think you get some pretty cool accessories with the ant, the PIM lab, and then, of course, the hood. Ghost didn't really have any weapons, so it's okay. She didn't come with any. Lily's didn't really have anything on the movie, but it came with some pretty cool accessories that kind of made sense for him. And I just think it's a pretty cool two-pack. And maybe a boring two-pack for some, but... If you like Ant-Man and the, just the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, or just anything Ant-Man, this two-pack definitely you want to pick up. And I think it was like around $50 online. I could be wrong. But yeah, that's my review of the two-pack Ant-Man the Wasp, Luis, and Ghost. I hope you all enjoyed the movie whenever you go see it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I guess the next review will be Giant-Man. With that, I hope you all have a good rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.